Okay, hello, hello, everybody. How are you today? Happy Saturday. Thanks for having us. It's a great event. You know, we got a chance to walk outside, to take a look at uh, some of the stalls and some of the businesses out there. And I feel like we're really encouraged by the innovation, right? The energy, yeah. the so ambition. Much, there's so much heat here. So much I, heat. <laughs> um, so I have a very easy job right now because I have a 20 minute conversation with a, a lovely lady, a woman that has so much knowledge from the investment banking side, also from the, uh, of course, the innovation side and the technology side as well. I really don't need to introduce what DD D is. It's the equivalent, I would call it the Chinese version of Uber. I'm sure you've heard that, but it's so much more than just what Uber is. And we're here to talk about the new services that uh, DD D is innovating that maybe Uber can learn from, although I don't know if you want that to happen, but uh, <laughs> anyways, but uh, yes, we're also here to talk about the sharing economy. And, you know, I was talking to my producer backstage and I said, you know, most people must know what the sharing economy is, but actually that's not the case. So the sharing economy is a way for people to share services, right? Make the best, most efficient use of assets, like for instance, hotel rooms or cars in this case with DD QID. Now, DD QID is the largest taxi hailing app in the world by users. So let's not even talk about Uber in this case. Let's talk about the huge market of China and the availability of the service and the opportunities as well. So, Jean, thank you so much for making time for us at this great event of Rise. Why don't you explain to us, you know, with the need and the expansion, the huge growth of DD QID in China. Sure, sure, thank you. Am I on? Yes, you're okay. on. Okay, <laughs> this is a room with a lot of heat, so I couldn't tell. Well, first of all, as many of you who have traveled to China a lot, you must know, right, there's many aspects that Chinese people's living condition has improved significantly. Ch technology transformed the way you shop, transformed the way you communicate, transformed the way you search information. But there's one thing that 800 million urban people still suffer from on a daily basis, which is commuting. Yes. Right. And anyone that's been to Beijing knows how hard that exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> Last week, on one day, there were two people stepping into my office. One is to get a job, the other is to resign. The one who's trying to get a job because his, new, his company, he just joined a company, and the company got relocated to another place where he had to travel two hours on the way to go there. And another one tried to resign because she just got pregnant. She used to travel also an hour to our office, but she needs to do two, two, three transitions. From She needs to walk, I think, at least uh, two kilometers to the subway. Wow. And then after the subway, she needs to take a bus. After the bus, she needs, still needs to walk. And as a pregnant woman right now, she just couldn't squeeze in the subway anymore. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have experience you know, on subway in China, yeah. so it's unbearable. So two of them, it, it, was, a, it was a very typical um, example in China was happening. And as many of you may know, the public transportation system were built decades ago. So it couldn't support the latest mega city layout and a growing population. Yeah. For me, I never dare to try subway after once because I feel like I just finished a gym workout. I was all sweaty. And for people who actually drive, there's a, there's a word developed for that called angry driver syndrome. Everyone who actually drive in Beijing or Shanghai to work after two hours, you be become extremely angry. Oh yes. You will release your I negative understand. energy everywhere. So that's what's happening right now. And not to say those hundreds of millions of people who actually wear heavy mask and ride to work because of heavy pollutions. So people are not happy about it. And what we think our company to do is to provide a service to provide a way to maximize the utilization of existing resource. Mm -hmm. Although commuting is a big issue, but waste is also massive. People spend, not like the States, right? You spend two months of your salary to buy a car. But in China, because of the income level, people actually spend a years of income to buy a car, wow. but to park it 95% yeah. in the parking garage. <laughs> yes. right? And right. also gas fee is much higher here. And as as a portion of the whole total package is actually much higher in terms of cost structure. Yeah. So it doesn't make any sense. So you see a lot of wasted 
resources like buses, shuttle buses owned by property companies. Mm -hmm. There are 200,000 buses in China that is run under really low efficiency. Right, and yeah. that's something that Didi Kuai Di does exactly. as well. So you organize buses, shuttle buses. Exactly, so that's what we're doing right now. We're providing a one-stop service platform for everyone. Our mission here is to use ride sharing, not just ride sharing, but service sharing, as you just pointed out, mm -hmm. or resource sharing, right? We can share everything. We can share a driver as well, we are, which we can talk about chauffeur business, yes. which is to share, <laughs> I love that. To share drivers. Invention. And we also, we can share private jet. A private you know, jet? A private jet. There are many private jets companies that are suffering because they couldn't get access to users. They fly full, to, let's say from Beijing to Hangzhou, right? They pick up passengers like you celebrities uh, to go from Beijing to Hangzhou. Right. But on the way back, it's empty because they couldn't find people to match their route. But now with a super entrance, we call ourselves the super entrance, you basically get access to everyone, right? Hundreds of millions of people use our app. And in the past few weeks, we have been number one free download, number one free download on App Store, wow. Apple Store. So you're really it's the growing. Most, it's the most <laughs> frequently used software. So we think the definition for ride sharing is basically to maximize utilization mm -hmm. and to make comfortable commuting to be available to everyone at a minimum cost at the cheapest price. Mm -hmm. That's what we are here for. And it's also to help man, man, government to manage traffic, pollution, and help people working in this industry like taxi drivers, bus drivers to earn more so they can make better life. Right. So that's what you know we believe in and we are working toward that direction. Okay, but then you're disrupting and changing <laughs> the traditional right, way of doing right. business and not everyone's a fan of that. As you know, so you're going through some regulatory challenges as well yeah. in China. Yeah, okay. So there are two things this company believes in. Number one is innovation. And we can talk about our product innovation. We have a lot of very interesting and cool products I'm very proud of. And the next thing is our philosophy. We do not believe in disruptive termination. What does that mean? Disruptive termination when it concerns millions of people's jobs, when, you mean, when it means you need to terminate millions of people's jobs, we do not believe in it, right? We do not believe in it when it concerns to tens of millions lives. There are 2.6 million taxi drivers in China. Everyone has a family, so that's tens of millions of people's yes. lives. We do not believe in terminating that. What we believe in is collaborative reform from within. We believe in working with everyone, mm -hmm. working with the government, working with the taxi drivers, working with the taxi companies, but the end goal is still to serve our users better. That's why we spend a lot of effort in how to improve the technology to transform the whole ta taxi industry. And we no longer just serve taxi, we also do private cars, we also do carpooling, um, the, the hitch product, we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, hitch. Right? Yep. And on regulatory, I feel extremely encouraged at these days because when we talk to Shanghai government, when we talk to a lot of municipal government, we feel government officials are much more open-minded and forward-thinking than we think they are. Huh. And we, we think there are a lot of in common between us than I realize because these people, they all, they all went to San Francisco. They all went to New York. They all went to Tokyo before. They studied the modern city infrastructure and one vice mayor told me, actually, he is afraid that his city will lag behind when the mobile internet service is sweeping up the world. They actually have that concern. From a city management perspective, what they want is competitive edge on city image and also on how to help their city people to live better. So they say, we want to attract the top talent capital to our city, mm -hmm. so you want to make sure we can digitalize transportation here. Right. So that's their mindset already. But they, on the other hand, they also say, but we don't want people to go on the street and protest and, and do Turn a lot of violence. <laughs> yes, and burn cars. Set and, fires as they yes, do Yes, we don't like that. So yeah. help me help you. Help me help you. Let's work on it together. Let's work on how we can make taxi people's life better. At the same time, we can provide more rides to people, and that's what we believe in. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a company's philosophy when it comes to regulatory, and we have seen a lot of encouraging results 
we just uh, come into agreement with Shanghai govern government how to really bring in private car services into regulatory routine. I think the world is watching. You see what's happening in Rio, you see what's happening in Paris, you see what's happening UK. in UK. It's a common issue shared by the whole world. And now we are trying to figure out a way in China to make it work. And if we can make it work in China, we feel confident the world can make it out. OK, as well. well, you're not yeah. the only one, obviously, in this game, right? <laughs> so we do, we do have to touch yeah. on the competition, because I'm sure everyone's thinking this. You know, how do you separate and basically make your service unique? Yes. Um, from what I see, you have 3 million private car rides each and every year, compared to, say, you know, Uber does, I think, a million private car rides. So you're three times the size of Uber in that market. Uber, though, says they're going to make China a priority. They, they have a lot of dollars, as you saw with their latest round of funding. They're right. going to invest a billion dollars in China. Are you right. concerned at all? Right, right. That's uh, some other philosophy we want to share. So when it comes to competition, we welcome competition, and we're al always thankful to competition. It's competition that keeps a company motivated and ever improving, right? And we have been born in the most competitive market ever yeah. worldwide is China's mobile internet. I'm sure if there's a lot of entrepreneurs down there, you know how competitive China's oh, yeah. mobile internet is. And we were born in that market. So we are a pretty good player as ourselves. So we play good sports. And on the other hand, we think we provide a very unique business model and a service to our customers, to our, to our drivers. I just said we believe in innovation. And we think we actually created a lot of very, very interesting and cool products. And that's welcomed by young people, by professional. Uh, the three million number you were talking about are private car service. Yeah. And I'll share with you some more number, which is, let's say, a hitch product. I don't know how many of you actually go to Beijing or first <laughs> city in China. It's a very cool thing right now. If you don't know it, you're outdated. It's the key. Yeah, hitch, hitch. Okay, so let's explain it. It's the, the carpooling service that yes, you provide, yes. right? It's a social carpooling. I have it's to emphasize It's kind of like Match.com as well. <laughs> yeah, so basically how we generate this service is throughout our system, we realize there are a lot of people who only use our private car once a week but because that day his plate is restricted by the government, you know, weekly restriction on plate. But on the other six days, he still drive him or herself. And that's a huge waste of the resource, right? And it's very boring for him or her two hours on the road with a lot of gas. So we say, hey, we see a lot of data. We know who is going from the same starting point to the same destination. On our system, we see destination. Mm -hmm. So we know who can ride together with you, and we'll match you together. But of course, the driver can pick whoever he wants based based on hobbies, <laughs> interests, profiles, and profiles, presentations. Uh -huh. Yes, interests, <laughs> so, so you long can, walks on the beach. Exactly, yeah, so exactly. you can make good friends. I have some headhunter friends who actually recruit daily on what? that hitch because they just drive around Zhongguancui and Shangdi area, which is so-called Silicon Valley area wow. in, in Beijing, and you find good candidates. And I have an angel investor who invests in DD, and he tries to meet new entrepreneurs just through driving. I think he has other purposes, but he told me, <laughs> but he told me that. So we believe in him. Are they male or female? <laughs> well, both actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> one female, one male. And the good thing about it is extremely environmental friendly, and you can make very interesting talk. And also another good effect is China now is going through a trust crisis. Mm. People don't actually make friends on the street. People will feel you really strange yeah. if you say hi. But this is a way, actually, gently, we can match people who share the same hobby and interest and have them to share a ride together. It's extremely cool. And now we have the networking effect. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, when we launched the taxi three years ago, it took us eight months to reach 10,000 trips a day. So at the end of that first eight months, we finally reached 10,000 trips a day. Mm -hmm. And when we launched the private car service, which was last August, it took us one month to reach that number because there's abundant uh, supply yes. and demand. And when we launched this new service, which is the Hedge, on June 1st, it took us one month, and guess what? We reached one million rides Already. at the end of one first month. It's just because of 
the efficiency, operation efficiency. You were talking about the difference. Yeah. This is the difference. You, once you reach certain scale, you will have operation efficiency. If you don't have it, your users suffer from it. Your drivers suffer from it. Yeah. That's why a company, when you're in internet plus transportation, you have to reach critical mass. Yeah. And as long as you have the critical mass, your users will enjoy your service. Otherwise, you will have to subsidize heavily, heavily to that, and it's not sustainable, right? Right. So we want to make sure we allocate the right capital and resource to the genuine request. And once you have the sufficiency, once you have the efficiency, then you can do that. So this is how we differentiate ourselves from others. First of all, we are very local team, mm -hmm. so we are very fast in responding to the market need. Hitch is a great example that we see the need from the system right. and we generate this. And um, I like the chauffeur service. And that the you chauffeur offer. business. So can you explain this. Go yes, ahead. this is this is even cooler. I, I think. think so. I think North America needs a version. Yeah, of this. I need that a lot <laughs> because I'm a very poor driver. Yes. So there are there are two types of people who need this service. First one is who people who go out partying a lot and drink a lot. And when you drive your own cool Ferrari there, you want to show off, right? You drive a oh, Ferrari you? there yes. and you, you join a party, but you will have a few shots, right? Yeah. Then a few too many drinks. Yes. And then you couldn't drive back and what do you do with it? You cannot park your Ferrari on the street and with rain pouring to it. So on our chauffeur service, you can request a driver. And a lot of drivers actually, they just, they are our existing drivers from taxi, from private car service. So there's significant synergy from our platform. So the, the driver will ride a bicycle to meet you <laughs> at your place or ride, a, or ride a bus to meet you. Normally it's at night, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's okay, so it's at night. He can, he, can, he can pick you up and drive you home and then he will go home himself. And I said another occasion for a lot of women drivers, it's very helpful. For example, I'm a very poor driver myself, and I couldn't park whoa, in whoa, Beijing. Whoa, 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 Gene. No, 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 I'm uh, sorry. No, no, it's, it's not me. women are not bad. <laughs> yeah. Women okay. are good drivers. Yes. I myself okay. are, is a very bad driver, and my husband is even worse. So I don't think. So, I believe so. that. I really do. I do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, my, so I couldn't count on my husband. So, <laughs> so I'm driving, I'm driving. So, so when we need to send our kids to hospital, um, I need to find a chauffeur driver so that you know, when I send my kids to hospital, I don't need to waste time and getting stressed about parking. Mm -hmm. I just can have a professional driver to park for me. And also shopping as well, right? You do want to carry a lot of bags. Well, that's what your husband's for. <laughs> You're supposed to take him yeah. along so he carries the bag. Yes, yes. He's enjoying the ride sharing with me together. Okay. So, um, okay. so we're, we're, we're very good. Okay, so, <laughs> so you know, we talked a lot about critical mass, yes, right? And DD yes. Kui D is as successful as they are in the uh, Chinese market right. because of critical mass. But here, when you walk outside, there's a, a lot of startups, obviously, yes. people starting off with small scale. What advice would you give them right now? You mean for uh, for people yeah. to do startup? To, yeah, for them to do a startup to hopefully become a, a DD Kui D in the future. Right, right, right. Well, from my own experience, is the key is about the team. It's really to have someone you feel strong chemistry with, mm -hmm. and if you can stay with these people twenty four seven without feeling bored, and <laughs> and thinking, you know, these are all very open minded people. I think. DD is a great example. I landed in this company a, a year ago. I struggled at the beginning whether I can fit in, but later I figured out this is such a young company, so young and dynamic, just like the crowd here mm -hmm. as I see. Uh, average age is 26 year old. I'm sure a lot of startups are like this. So as long well as you have open mind and you're really focused on execution, you can have a good winning chance when it comes to OTO, online and offline. Yeah, yeah. okay, well we are out of time. I told you my job was pretty easy, right? Just having a conversation with Gene. Yeah. So hopefully you learned something in this, and I think um, our message to the crowds out here and to this event is to keep the dream. Yeah, yes. continue living it. Thank you again. Thank Gene you. Liu, Didi Kwaidi. Thank you.